Hi everyone, I'm Anna Olson and I'm your host for The Real Women of Philadelphia. Today I'm excited to share a treasured family recipe with you that shows my Eastern European roots, my grandmother's pierogies. She's the one that inspired me to cook at a young age and we used to prepare these together. She was always so proud of this recipe because our whole family loved them. And today I'm excited to share my version of this recipe with a creamy Philly twist. I'll start by making the filling. What I've done is cooked four cups of diced Yukon Gold potatoes. Now, the secret addition, a full tub of the Philly chive and onion soft cream cheese. The full tub of it goes in. This way, you don't have to add added flavors or seasonings. As you mash the potatoes, the Philly cream cheese melts into them. This is gonna make a nice, soft, creamy filling. I'll give this a little stir just to smooth it out. And it's important to let these cool down completely and you can chill the potato mixture until you're ready to assemble the pierogies. Now for the dough. And this is the treasured part of the recipe that my grandmother shared with me and we would make together. I'll start by blending the liquids. Four whole eggs. I'll give these a little whisk while I add a full cup of milk and three quarters of a cup of water. Using my stand mixer fitted with the dough hook, I'll measure in five cups of all-purpose flour. And I'll simply add the entire liquid mixture at once and then knead this almost like bread dough. And there we go. You can see the dough has this elastic, stretchy look to it. Now what you do need to do is let this dough rest covered for at least an hour. That makes it easier to roll and guarantees you'll have tender pierogies. And now that the dough has had an hour to rest, it's time for the fun part. Rolling, cutting, and filling the pierogies. Keep your hands well floured. Flour the dough a little bit. You can start stretching it by hand. Then, to make it even, use a rolling pin. And you want to roll it as thinly as possible. Here we go. Dip a two and a half inch cookie cutter in a little flour and start cutting your individual pierogi rounds. I have my chilled filling and I take a generous spoonful of it, about a tablespoonful for each pierogi. To finish the pierogies with floured fingers, stretch the dough over the filling, bring it together in the center, pull it around and then just pinch carefully. And I'll just spread them on a baking tray as I fold away. Remember, this recipe makes eight dozen, so by the end, you're gonna be a pro. Once you've got all your pierogies assembled, whether you choose to freeze them or serve them right away, you need to blanch them first, and that's cooking them in boiling water. I have a pot here with lightly salted boiling water, and I'll just drop the pierogies in. You can tell when your pierogies are done because they simply float to the top of the boiling water. This can take two to three minutes. Once they start floating to the top, you want to drain them well. I've melted some butter, browned some diced onion right from the pot into the skillet and give them a nice little toss with the onions and butter. And with the heat of the water in the pan, it's softened up that Philly cream cheese inside with the potato, so it's gonna be soft and tender. Mm, these are ready for the table. So whether you serve these as a side dish or an entree, you've got something you can truly be proud of, especially if you make it with your family members. Have you dreamt of traveling to the home country of your ancestors and walking the streets they walked and learning their culinary traditions? Well, Philly can take you there. From April 16th to May 13th, submit your original recipe using cream cheese with a photo of your finished dish inspired by the place you want to visit and tell us why you'd like to go there you could win a week-long trip for two to that dream destination. Visit realwomenofphiladelphia.ca to enter today.